Maybe. Maybe? Maybe. Okay. Can we write this down? Yeah, you got that? Now, let's try and work out what this word means. So, this prefix thermo, what do you think thermo means? Uh, think of words that sound like thermo. Thermo? thermo? Temperature. Temperature. So, what do you think thermo means? Well, one second. <laughs> thermo, what do you think thermo means? Temperature. Something to do with temperature. And dynamics? Yes. It's to do with movement. So this lesson is going to be about, you know, how heat moves. It's rules for movement. Um, okay. So we'll explain firstly thermodynamics. It's a part of physics that studies the movement of heat between different objects. Uh, we'll just take it bit by bit. So write that bit first. So you have to remind me what you want to study next year. Um, Harine, what are you studying? Um, engineering. Chemical engineering. So this will be important for you next year. You will do thermodynamics. Amanda? Mm -hmm. uh, you probably won't do this then. So <laughs> uh, he? Ah, uh, yeah, so you will study this. You'll do a whole class on this. Uh, Andy, you're doing geophysics, isn't it? Yeah, geophysics. You definitely will do this. And then. Yeah, so you want. Yeah, I'm choosing. Hmm? You're thinking about your choice. Yeah. 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 Will it be computer though? Actually, I want to do. Uh, I, don't, I don't really know. Is this engineering? Kind of, but biology. Ah, a mixture of biology and engineering? Yeah. Maybe something like bioengineering, biochemistry, something like this. Okay, interesting. So then if you do this, you might see this again. Okay, so the next part is, it also studies the change in pressure and volume. Okay. Um, and you, you don't have to write that part down if you don't want to. But the next one you should write down. Statistics is often used in thermodynamics. Now, do you know this word statistics? You know it, you don't. So he, you know this one. Andy? Yep. You know this word? Yep. And Grace? Maybe Chinese. Maybe Chinese, yes. Well, I hope in Chinese. And um, statistic is to do with, Korean. what would you say? Graph. Graph, averages, yeah. percentages. Yeah. You you know. Know. yeah, you'll do it in maths. Uh, maybe later. Uh, okay, um, thermodynamics is useful because it helps understand how the world of the very small atoms connects large scale world we see today. Ah, no, you don't need to write that part down. So just to look at the motion of particles. I'm trying not to give you too much English because I know you don't like English. I want to give you the right amount, not too much, not too little. Okay, have we got this much? No, no. Not yet? Continue?
continue? Okay. So we have seen that the kinetic energy is found by using this formula. Remember this? PV equals 3 over 2E. Um, but consider that we also know PV equals um, NKT. This, what's the name of this one? This, what's this one called? Uh, Ideal yeah. gas law. So because there's a PV here and a PV here, we can make them equal, right? So what can we say next? NKT, NKT equals 3 over 2E. Makes sense? Yeah? So what can we say E equals? Yeah, 3 over... Huh? Why did my K go down? Oh, sorry. I'm rearranging to get to T. Sorry. So if I rearrange to get to T, we can bring the NK underneath, and we get T equals 3 over 2K E over M. So I'll just write that down on the, the pad here. So we have PV equals NKT, and you also have PV equals 3 over 2E. If you put them together, you get uh, NKT equals 3 over 2E, so you get T equals 3 over 2N... Uh, 3e over 2nk. Or if you want, that's t equals 3 over 2k e over n. Molecules, yeah, because, uh, Amanda, I used K here. If N was number of moles, what do I put here? R, yeah. Yeah? Okay, now, what did we say the E was here? This is total kinetic energy. So what do you think this means? Total kinetic energy divided by N. What would that mean, do you think? energy for each molecule. So you could say T equals 3 over 2K average kinetic energy uh, per molecule. From where? From here? This part? This E is total kinetic energy. So total kinetic energy divided by N. If you think about it like, um, you know, if you have X1 plus X2 plus X3 divided by 3, that's the average. Do you know this word, Grace? Mm -hmm. No, this word. Do you know? Average? Okay. Uh, I don't think I ever told you. You have one, two, three. One point six, one point six five, one point seven. If you add and divide by three, this is the average. So what we're saying here is the total divided by n is the average. Yeah? Let me just check what I want. Yeah, so I'll just say here, T equals 3 over 2K, and I'll just write KE. Now, there's different ways to write average. You can write KE with a little average here, or in some books you might see it written like this, with lines around it like this. Or in some books you might see it written like this. KE with maybe a line on top like this. But they all mean the same thing. 
I just want to show you this in case you look in a physics book. These all mean the same thing. This is average, 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 average. Just different ways to write it. But they all mean average. I think I'll stick with using this one for today. In the exam? In the exam, they use something like this. They would write KE and then they might write the word average here or um, ABG. But you see, it depends on who writes the exam. I think I know who writes the exam. And I don't know what he will use because he hasn't given a question about this one yet. But I know what the last person used. Um, I think the last person used... Oh, I don't remember. I think the last person used something like this. So I think it will be this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, continue. Yeah. This is a very important result. Um, now I'll explain what I'm talking about here. So let's have a look at this result here and let's see what it means. Uh, temperature equals, what did I say? Oh, my pad. Yeah. Temperature equals 3 over 2K times average kinetic energy, AVG. Or you could say um, average kinetic energy if you want 2K over 3 multiplied by temperature. So, if this temperature is 0 Kelvin, for example, what does that mean this must be? Zero. 0 Joules. So, if it's 0 Joules, what does that mean about its movement? No movement. That the molecules must be at rest. Well, this is the thing. Yeah, well, this is the thing. It's ex extremely difficult to actually do this. Like, so crazy difficult to do that it's only been done once or twice recently. And it's not even, it wasn't even actually zero. It was something like 0 0.01. So, uh, you can't really do it. So, if this tape, um, you know from chemistry, like if I look at the coffee, all the little coffee molecules are moving, aren't they? Yeah. So if it was zero Kelvin, it would mean the molecules are not moving, that every molecule is at rest. It's completely frozen. You understand? That each molecule, it doesn't move. Right now the molecules are vibrating like in the table, or in me, or the ground, they're all vibrating. If it's zero Kelvin, it means they must all be at rest, not moving. Now, as Harine was saying, can you actually do this? Not really. It's so difficult to make them all at rest. It's not really possible. But now, this is the interesting thing. If I increase the temperature, what happens to the kinetic energy? It increases. In fact, if I double the temperature, what happens to the kinetic energy for each particle? It doubles as well. So for example, if I go from, let's say, 100 Kelvin to 200 Kelvin, then what happens to the kinetic energy? It becomes twice as big. Do you understand? Yeah. This result is so, so important and I'll explain why it's important when you're ready to listen. You got this? Yeah. Let me explain why it's important. So, in your mind you have two worlds the very small 
and then your day to day. So here are you, and you are happy, and you have your cup of coffee, nice big cup of coffee. And uh, let's say its temperature is a nice 300 Kelvin. Is it? Can you measure the temperature? Yeah, you can. You just stick in a thermometer. You can measure the temperature. This very small world is when you look at the coffee, like really closely, and it has lots of little molecules, and the molecules are moving around. You know this from chemistry, don't you? The atoms, yeah? So this formula gives you a relationship. It says that the temperature here relates, is proportional to the kinetic energy of each, the average kinetic energy of each particle. That you have a way to link the big world to the small world. It's a relationship. So you know if the temperature increases, what happens to the kinetic energy here? It increases. And what happens to the speed? increases as well. So this is why it's an important result because it can relate the big world to the small world. It's like a bridge between the two. That's why it's an important result. And this is why we use Kelvin because zero Kelvin matches with zero joules. This is the reason we use Kelvin as well. Yeah. So if I go back here, what I want you to write down um, this just this last paragraph here. This is a very important result, and it gives a reason why Kelvin is so important. It states that temperature is kinetic energy with just a change in the units. Like if you look at this formula here. What's the difference between the left and the right? It's only this constant here, isn't it? So really, kinetic energy and temperature, they're nearly the same thing, except for this constant here, which changes the units from, from Kelvin to joules. So temperature is kinetic energy with just a change in the units. No temperature means no kinetic energy, which means no movement. So this last paragraph is an important. Please write it down. K. Which K? Two K. Which K? Show me. It's a constant, yeah. It's a small K. Um, yeah, I'll show you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this one here. Same. Oh, the same K, yeah. Yeah, you see, uh, can I write a little here? Uh, I don't want to make a bit of paper here. So use small K for this uh, constant and big K for Kelvin, so you don't confuse them. Yeah, this is Kelvin, but this is a constant. Yeah, small k, small k, small k, small k. Yeah, we'll math assessment. Math assessment? A long time ago. Math assignment? And then well, you want that back? No, I agree. I want my grade. I gave you a grade, didn't I? No. Are you sure? You mean when you were in September? No. What are you talking about? No, nothing, nothing, nothing. Ah, no! You want your math coursework, is it? Yeah. No, well, never mind. It's not for the math. Ah, who's your math teacher? Yeah. So ask him. <laughs> yes? Did you get your results? No. no. Ah, who's your teacher now? Ah, I'm not Joan or Roland, <laughs> so you need to ask Joan or Roland. Um, I'm sure if you ask Joan, she'll get it for you. 
the note was for with your student number. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, have you got this paragraph? Yes. Yeah. I'll yeah. oh, no, write it quickly, quickly. And um, do you talk about this in chemistry? The relationship between or what is temperature? No. So in chemistry temperature is just Temperature. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Do you use Kelvin? Yeah, you do. You use Kelvin, don't you? Yeah. In chemistry. What do you use for pressure, though? Do you use Pascal's? Yeah. Continue now? What are you doing in chemistry at the moment? Reflection, refraction, oh diffraction. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 Sounds fun, interesting. Okay, Grace, you got this? Uh, five seconds. Okay. No coffee today. No time. No time. No time. Yep. Okay. Right. So um, we have something called internal energy U of a material, solid, liquid, or gas, is the total kinetic and potential energy of each molecule. It's the total heat energy. Uh, now there's a lot here, but. Uh, just before you start writing it down, I just want to explain it with a little picture here, then you can write it down. Oh, actually, you can go to this picture. So, each of these particles in my coffee cup have two types of energy. What are they? It has a kinetic energy, and also because it's off the ground, it has a potential energy. So, the total energy you add up all the kinetic energies plus all the potential energies of each atom. You understand? In the cup, the total kinetic and total potential. This we call internal energy U. It's each kinetic and each potential. So that's what I mean by this formula. It's the total kinetic plus the total potential. Hmm? Like you said the sum Yeah. Each atom. Oh the sum of the kinetic So you imagine I know it's not I know it's impossible, but you imagine you can calculate the kinetic energy and potential energy of every atom in the coffee cup and you add it all together. You add it all together so it's the sum of every every atom. molecule, yeah. Uh, you know in English we can often use each and every. You can say each molecule or every molecule. Yeah, I mean like, because when you say the sum of kinetic energy, and the, the, the sum of potential yeah. energy in the cup, right? Yeah. That means it's uh, all together, yeah. the energy like, yes. of the atoms all together. Yes, yeah, correct. So it's not like every single um, atom. Oh, it is. Add it up. Yeah, it is added up, yeah. so it's not the energy of each one, it's just the energy of the whole thing. The whole system added up, the total of the system, yeah. Yeah, so it'll be lots and lots of small numbers added together. Yeah. This is called the internal energy.
What is the what? I just means like the first atom, the second atom, the third atom. The I is like one, two, three, four. So in the this one, the part of this one is the total number of the particles. Yeah, the sum. You did this symbol in maths, didn't you? Yeah, I did. But no, I'm not good at this. Okay. I means each one, like I is one means the first atom, I is two means the second atom. Uh -huh. I, yeah. You got this? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is called the internal energy. Yeah? Yeah, I equals one, it starts at one, from one, the first atom, then I is two, the second atom, then I is three, the third atom. And it stops at, um, if you want, guys, if you want, you can write on the top here, big N on the top, because that's how many molecules you have. Do you know, like you can write it like this. Yeah? Sorry, Sophie. Uh, do you know what I mean? You can write it like this, yeah. You got this? Yep. Yep, okay. So, uh, that's internal energy. It's the total energy of the coffee cup. Right, so heat is a type of energy. Um, but heat has no mass. Heat can move from one place to another. Um, in thermodynamics, heat means energy which is moved between two things when one of them is hotter than the other. Heat is not the same as temperature. So I'll explain this now. There's a difference between heat and temperature. They're not the same thing. Let me try and draw to explain. So, for example, um, heat is an energy, so we measure it in joules. Temperature, what do we measure it in? Um, Kelvin. Kelvin. So, what exactly is the difference? Well, let me explain with my, with my coffee cup. The heat is like the uh, total internal energy. But the temperature, remember we said, is like an average kinetic energy. So the temperature tells us how much energy each molecule has on average. But the heat is like the total, everything added together. You see the difference? So the, well, it's just heat, right? Yeah, so the heat is like a total, whereas the temperature is like an average. So they're different. Average so the heat? heat? Temperature. Uh, yeah, it's the average for the to uh, for each atom, yeah. So um do you have no? Do you understand the, the difference? How we can temperature Yeah, if you want, like for example, temperature would be like the total kinetic energy divided by n. all of them together, yeah, yeah. So for example, this means, so this means, so listen carefully to this sentence, okay? Um, this means a swimming pool, 
in our swimming pool at 20 Celsius has more heat than a cup of coffee at 80. Why? More molecules, yes. However, we say the cup of coffee is hotter than the swimming pool. Don't we say that in English? So this is a problem with uh, hotter and heat. So in English we say the coffee cup is hotter than the swimming pool because it's 80 and 20. But in physics we say the swimming pool has more heat. You have to be careful, okay? I know, I know. <laughs> yes. Now, um, if you want to write that example down with the swimming pool, that's good. You don't have to, if you understand. Do you have to write all of these? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, what I really care about is the example at the end with the swimming pool. So, um, just the formal definitions now. Heat is also called thermal energy. Um, are we ready for the next box? No. Lots of English today. So, what can we say about heat? So, the first thing about heat is you can transfer it from one body to another body. So, you, you know, the heat from the coffee cup can heat warm the table. What else can we say about heat? You can measure it. And it's not a material, okay? Heat is not a material. You can't hold heat. It's a property. Um, it's like uh, so, uh, energy, it's something that it, uh, mass has, it's not something that you can have by itself. You can't hold heat. Heat is a type of energy.
qui est faire Number two. So heat is something you can measure, and we measure heat using like joules. That's what I mean. Measurable quantity means you can measure it. You know, measure it. Yeah. Okay. Continue. Yes. Uh, Harry. Yeah. Okay. So the heat supplied Q is the energy that you put into the system. So for example, well, we'll get some examples in a minute. Mechanics was really bad. Yeah. The waves and the electricity was okay, but the mechanics no good. You need to revise your mechanics. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not there. No. Yeah. It's probably better than biology. Yeah. Yes. Like, were you expecting to pass biology? Yeah. Uh, what did you get in biology mid semester? Like almost like. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, you need to revise mechanics, okay? Yeah. Do you have the book that I gave you with the questions? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You need to try and get them finished, okay? Yeah. Right, so for example, um, uh, the coffee cup, you know, maybe I put it on some heat. So what happens? You know, it gets hotter. The Q is the heat I put in. It's like how much energy I put into the cup from my heater. Yeah. This is what I mean by the Q, is the energy you put in. And so for example, a train engine works because it gets heat energy. Well, where does the train get the heat energy from? Uh, it gets it from the coal or the whatever fuel you're using. This heat energy from the coal is converted into work, it makes the train go. <laughs> yeah, it's all train. Um, well, you don't have to use the train. I mean, you can use the coffee cup, you know. So if you put this on a heater, the heat energy uh, Q is what goes into the cup. Yeah. Um, anyways, uh, some more definitions, I'm afraid. So we say two systems are in thermal equilibrium if no heat flows between them when they're connected. I'll explain this.
No, I'm, that's me explaining. <laughs> Uh, so you can just write the box down, that's what I care about. Yeah? Yes? So I'll explain what this means, okay? Um, So if this cup is very, very hot, and I put it on the cold table, the heat energy from the cup will move to the cold table. Yep. But if this is the same temperature as the table, this is 20 Celsius and this is 20 Celsius, then no energy will go from the cup to the table. There's no movement of energy. Yeah. Um, and if the table was very, very hot, and the cup was very, very cold, where would the energy move? Yeah, yeah to the cup. The heat energy moves to the cup. So thermal equilibrium means there's no movement of heat energy. So basically it means they're the same temperature. That's thermal equilibrium. Yeah? Um, so, I mean, you can write an example down if you want. That's okay. But basically, it means at the same temperature. Basically. So, um, here's my little uh, example of what's happening here. It's a simple engine. So you, here you have the coal. The coal makes heat. The heat makes the cold water become steam. Mm -hmm. The steam comes along, goes down into the piston, and the steam pushes this piston back and forth, and it makes the wheel turn, mm -hmm. and the train moves. So if you look at the order, heat energy, Q, is pumped into the engine from the coal. So the Q is here. Then there's a change in the internal engine. Um, so the internal energy here, remember internal energy? Increase or decrease? Increase, yeah, because it gets um, heat energy from the coal. So the Q goes in here and it makes the U bigger. Then what happens? Well then, uh, there's some work done. So there's a W here. How does that happen? How does it make the piston move back and forth? When the steam enters this, it expands and pushes this back. And then I think what happens is then the steam uh, comes out the side and then it closes again. So you know uh, on the old trains you see the steam come out the, the side. Um, I think it's coming from the piston. And then when, it co uh, when the steam is released uh, it closes again and then more steam pumps in. Uh, it's probably more complicated than that. Uh, I mean you don't have to... I mean, you don't even have to write this down. I just want you to try and understand what's happening with the energies, okay? So firstly, there's a Q here. The Q makes the U here bigger. And then the U makes the W here. So it's like this becomes this becomes this. I don't know if you're confused or if you're happy. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> uh, what do you do? Are you happy or confused? I can't tell. Okay. 
not happy, not confused. You understand, okay. Um, can we continue? Yeah. Now, I mean, I don't need you to draw this. Uh, I'm just trying to give you an example of how we use Q, U, and W. So, are you happy that Q is U plus W? Because what energy goes in? The energy that goes in is Q. And what energy comes out? The work of the train and a warmer uh, water. So, it makes sense that the Q should equal this plus this. Do you remember what this is? Uh, actually, so yeah, if you want, you can write this part down. But do you remember what this is called from mechanics? No, 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 no. No, no, stop saying things. <laughs> Conservation of energy. That the energy at the start equals this energy at the end. So the Q goes in and the W and the U come out. Yeah, this is the change. This is the extra energy. The uh, change of the U, the extra energy. Yeah, U is the total energy. True? But the delta U is the change, the extra energy it gets. So that's delta Yes, it is. into the energy, uh, I should say the system, and uh, the result was an increase in internal energy and work was done. However, it's possible to do work and see an increase in heat energy. Yeah? Yeah. Joules. You don't need to draw this one, I want you just to understand the idea. So in the last example, we started with Q and we made W and U at the end. In this example, it's the opposite. We have a work at the start to make heat. So watch this now. Um, can you see here, this is a little weight. And what's going to happen is the weight is going to fall. And as the weight falls, it pulls a rope. You see here? And this rope is wrapped around this rod. So when this falls, the rope is pulled and this spins around. And you see here, you have like two arms in the water and they spin around. So then what happens to the water? The water spins around. Yeah? Now, what energy does this have here? Potential. Potential. So what's going to happen is uh, when this hits the ground, it has no potential energy. All this potential energy changed into heat energy in the water. So the water is hotter. Huh? Yeah, well what's happening is when this falls, this spins around. This makes the water warmer. Mm -hmm. Yep. So the energy here, MGH, will equal the delta U here, the heat energy here. You don't seem happy with this one. You are happy with the last one. Yeah. Ah, the water is spinning. So it's kinetic energy. But remember we said temperature is average kinetic energy. 
So if you make the water move faster, then the little molecules will move faster. They'll have more kinetic energy. More kinetic energy means more temperature. You don't believe me. <laughs> you can do this. This experiment was done by James Prescott Jewell. Yeah, the man himself, Mr. Jewell. Okay. So he did this experiment about 100 years ago. I don't believe it. It's unbelievable, is it? I know it seems difficult to believe, but if I put my pen in here and spin this around for a few minutes and measure the temperature, it'll be warmer. Just a little warmer. Yeah. 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 Maybe because this was so unbelievable, you should write it down. Yes. But do you understand how it's the opposite of the last one? So on the last one, heat became work. Here, work becomes heat. I, what you can do is write his name down and you can read more about it if you want, if you don't believe me. Good, so you should research it then. In fact, in the next class, we will calculate how much warmer the water is. Wow. Mm -hmm. I will not be here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, continue. Uh, also a beautiful picture? That's okay. Uh, right, continue. Huh? Potential yeah, potential energy becomes heat energy. Okay. Next, now. So we have, um, you know, you have Newton's tree laws, and um, each part of physics has laws. And for this part of physics, we have laws of thermodynamics. So the first law is not called the first law, it's called the zero law. Just, you know, because... Zero? Yes, that's right. You read it correctly. What? The first law is not called the first law, it's called the zero law. And the reason it's called the zero law is because it's uh, too basic to be called the first law. On a zero Yes. Yes, 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 yes. The zero law. Okay, so what is the zero law? So the zero law says that if two 
thermodynamic systems are in thermal equilibrium with a third, then they are in thermal equilibrium with each other. Now wait, before you write that down, let me explain that. It, it makes sense. So for example, um, if these two are in thermal equilibrium, what does that mean? Same temperature, okay? And then if these two are in thermal equilibrium, it means same temperature. Therefore, this one is also in thermal equilibrium with this one. I mean, that, it's basic. It's so basic it's called the zero law, okay? So this is the zero law. Please write that down. Are they the same temperature or do they have the same heat? They have the same temperature, but they could have different uh, heat, yeah. Yeah? Okay. So let's have a look now at the first law, the real law. First law. The first law is a version of uh, conservation of energy. So basically, the first law is something you wrote down earlier that the energy in equals the energy out. Um, Usually it's written in this form. I think earlier what we had the W on the left, was it? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's conservation of energy. The energy in equals the energy out. The, ener uh, the energy at the start equals the energy at the end. So if you want to write as a formula, that's fine. questions that use this formula. Yeah. Okay, we got this? Alright. Uh, so the next law... Oh, I didn't write it down. Well, okay. Of course this is the second law. Um, let me explain what this means. Before, wait, before you write it down, I need to explain what it means. So heat cannot flow from cold to hot. So for example, if this cup is hot and this table is cold, this cup does not get hotter. Because this is hot and this is cold, the heat must go from the hot to the cold, not the other way. In fact, the other way is impossible. So what I'm saying here is um, heat cannot just flow from cold to hot. If it does, you must do some work to do it. So for example, example, um, let's say over here is very cold and here is very hot. The heat um, will not go from here, or sorry, the heat will go from the hot over to the cold. If I want the heat to go from the cold to the hot, I have to do some work. I have to take some of the heat and move it over there. There's actually something in your house that does this in your home. No, not the heater. Because the heater is hot and the heat goes from the hot to the cold room. 
air conditioning or fridge because if you think about your fridge um, if you have like hot food and you put it in the fridge um, it gets uh, cold yes and what's happening is the fridge well it's taking heat from the cup and it's pushing it out the back of the fridge the back of the fridge is hot um, what else well I think and also like the air conditioning so like for example uh, let's say outside it's very very hot and what do you want it to be inside very very cold so the heat wants to come from the outside inside because it's hot out there mm -hmm. and uh, the heat will go from the hot inside to the cool room and then the room becomes very hot also but if you turn on the air conditioning what happens the room becomes cold and the cold will go out so yeah so what happens is the air conditioning the AC it takes the heat from the room and puts it back out to the hotter outside yeah so, because of this, um, it means some work was done. If you want to move the heat the wrong way, you have to do work. Okay? It doesn't happen naturally. This is the um, second law. I didn't write it down. The second law. Uh, you don't need that delta U bit at the end. You understand these? I mean, they all make sense, don't they? The first one, if this and this is the same temperature, and this and this is the same temperature, then these two are the same temperature. The first law is just conservation of energy. And the second law, you understand from day-to-day -day life. The hot heat moves from hot to cold. Yeah? No, we're keen in here, it's okay. Okay, sorry. Continue? Yep. Okay. Here are two short questions to try. Can you take a picture? Um, Grace, this question one here uses the first law you were asking me about. Right? Uh, no, back here. What you just wrote? This first law? The first law is for question one. And uh, I suppose question two as well. Because it's the only law with a calculation in it. So um, you can try these two. Um, we'll have a look at them next week. The first one is about the train. Yeah. So the train burns coal and the coal makes the train move from rest to one meter per second. Yeah. Okay. Let's stop it there.